Hi everybody, welcome inside Hobson Fieldhouse. Sorry it took us a little while to get started on this playoff game between the Elkins Knights and the Maid Creek Rams. Here to bring you the play-by-play -play is Patrick Kinnick. Go for it. All right, Roger, we're in the third, third quarter. It's 33 to 24, Elkins on top. Spinning to the basket, no good. Tipped up, no good as Elkins has it. Now Ryan Jones gets his second basket of the night. Now they have an 11 point lead, the Elkins Knights. They had a great second quarter and now the ball is lost out of bounds by Angel Sonier of the Maid Creek Rams. Elkins trailed at the end of the first quarter, 15 to 10. And then they outscored them 19 to five in the second quarter to take a, a nine point halftime lead. Now they've uh, increased that to 11. Chris Johnson thought about a three. Now he ends up shooting the three off the front rim. No good. Fields with the rebound for Elkins. Underneath the basket. Lays it up. No good. Tips it up. No good. He's got it again. Up again. No good. And who has it now? Here come the Maid Creek Rams with it. Van Agus has it. Three chances for the Elkins Knights that time, and they were unable to score. Here's Washington for Maid Creek. Being guarded by the biggest man on the floor. Now a steal, Johnson down to Harris for the Knights. He lays it up a little long on the layup, but he gets his own rebound. 35-24, Knights have it. Harris now at the left elbow, and he gets it off to Van Ewell, Van Ewell. Chris Johnson fakes the three, now he penetrates. Nice pass to Fields who lays it in. Nice pass, and now a timeout by the Rams. We're gonna take a, a break here, 30. 724 Elkins. First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, everybody, welcome back. Roger Smith and Patrick Kinnick with you. Patrick, thanks for taking over. Um, the game that I just did before this one, the one between the Dulles girls and Jersey Village, really took a lot out of me. <laughs> I thought I might not be able to speak after it was over. So uh, you can do most of the talking here. And, you know, I got here as quick as I could, but you only have to do a half a game, right. I guess. Yeah, it uh, gives you a little bit of a break until the next one. And Roger's uh, working his fourth game today. Is that right, Roger? Fourth fourth game, high tower game earlier, and then a couple of girls games over at Del Mar. And now he's back over here at Hobson for this one. And then the finale, a girls game later on. Here's Washington to the basket. He's got a little bit too far, and the ball stolen away by Elkins. Here come the Knights. Fields has it. Van Yule to the basket, no good. Rebound to Washington for Maid Creek, who trail by 13. Nice little spin move by Washington for Maid Creek. Out to the three-point land, Van Agus. He penetrates his block on his shot attempt, and Chris Johnson can't quite believe it. It might have been on fields, but uh, yes, it was on fields. That'll take Van Agus to the free throw line for a couple of free throws. He has two free throws made in the first quarter and then uh, a bucket in the first quarter. So he has four points. He still has four as he brackets the first free throw. 37, 24, 4, 40 to play. Third quarter as the Elkins Knights kind of got off to a slow start, but uh, they've dominated since it was 15 to 10. They have dominated. And the rebound comes down to the Knights fields and he was fouled by Sonier of the Rams. Angel Sonier got a little bit too close and committed the foul. Knights in control here in the third quarter. Midway through, Harris being guarded by Sonier and he's taking his time. 
Crossing over his dribble and just taking his time. Not too much pressure. He gets it over the timeline. Chris Johnson. Swing it around back to Harris. And Harris back to Johnson. Top of the key. Good pass to Fields who penetrates it. Off the backboard a little hard. And the rebound comes down to the uh, Caleb Davis for the Rams. Washington has it back behind the back dribble. Nice nifty dribbling. Davis. Ortiz, now Van Agus. Rams take their time generally on offense, but they're not going to be able to do that too much longer. Here's Sonier with a long three, and he hits it. The sophomore having a game. He's got 15 points. Angel Sonier, 37-24, and now a steal. Layup and in by Joshua Van Agus, and it cuts it to eight. 37-29. Backcourt pressure again. Harris controls things. Now Chris Johnson in the lane. Nice pass to Fields. His shot was blocked by Ortiz. And now what have we got here? Got a player down. Uh, Sonier never made it to the other end. He got hit in the midsection area. And he's coming out of the ball game as the referees blew the whistle after the really nice block by the Rams. Coming out of there with a possible fast break. But they had to stop the play due to the injured player. And it's... Sonier, who is the leading scorer for the Rams, had to come out here, and he'll—I think he'll be back in, but he's got to take a, a break here. Coming out of the game uh, is uh, Davis, and Lamette comes in. Larison Lamette, his first action to the ball game. Van Agus now, right elbow continues on and lays it in. What a nice scoop layup shot. And now there's a little pressure again by the Rams. They cut it to six. It was just 13 about a minute and a half ago. Now there's a foul to backcourt. As the Rams putting on heavy pressure in the backcourt, it was 37-24, and now it's 37-31 uh, on that 7-0 run. Another substitution coming in for the Rams as Van Agus will take a break. Diaz comes into the game. Now there's a timeout in the, on the floor. I think Elkins is taking the timeout. We'll take a break with them. Will I'm we be sorry, taking I'm, a break, kinda, Roger? I can't really hear you a that timeout well. on the floor. I didn't know if you wanted to take a break or not. Yeah, let's take a break. It's 37-31, Elkins taking a break. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. Well, Patrick, uh, I've got some awesome news for you. The Ridgepoint boys have defeated Tompkins 71-58. to That's good this news. This is after Bush already knocked out top seed Katie Taylor. Wow. So Fort see. Bend ISD looking pretty good. Yeah, great, great to hear. Elkins now in a bit of a dogfight here in the third quarter. They were up by 13, now by 6, as Bell has it. A lot of pressure from the Rams. Here's Harris. Pops from about 14, short on the rim. Here comes Washington for the Rams. He's going to take it all the way in. He's tripped up and a foul. Looked like a pretty good call. Knights have hit a bit of a dry spell here in the last three minutes. As the Rams have gone on a little bit of a run here. Cutting that lead to six. Washington will go to the free throw line. Jamon Washington has six points, including four for six from the line, but he will not go to the free throw line. They say it was on the floor. 
In inbounding it will be easy. Ortiz. And now Washington has it. 40 feet from the basket. Easy has it now swinging around on the right side. Penetration move by La Lamette. And now Washington's going to shoot a three, but it was blocked. Ortiz fighting for it for the Rams. And there's a foul on the rebound. A little looked like possibly in an incidental contact, but Ortiz got knocked down and they had to call a foul, I guess. And um, Jacoby Harris, a little frustrated with the call, just going for the ball, trying to figure out how there could be a foul on that play. And do we have a substitution coming in? Yes, Elkins bringing in a substitution. It is Chris Johnson, who has 10 points in a ball game, but nothing here in the second half yet. Ortiz checks out for the Rams. Good hustle by him in his time on the floor. 218 to play, 37 31. We're in the third quarter. Rams have it. Grassau, first time he's been in the ball game. Saunier, left hand dribble to the basket, and it's blocked. And now the Rams do come out with it, though, on a scrambling situation. Washington. And a pass now to Easy, swinging to the right side. Saunier for three. It's off the front rim, and the Elkins has got it. Johnson to the basket, slam dunk for two. A two-hand slam and a little fast break off the short shot from the Rams. Rams get it back. Sonier trying another three. Short again. Another fast break. It's going to be the same, same outcome. Another slam for Johnson. Same exact thing happened twice. Short on the shot. And a fast break for the Knights. We're taking a timeout. 41-31. Elkins up by 10. GetAgreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAgreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. Back here at Hobson Fieldhouse, the uh, Knights just had a couple of fast break slam dunks from Chris, John or, yes, Chris Johnson, and they got that 10-point lead back. It was six, and they got two easy buckets off of fast breaks, and now they have that 10-point lead and feeling a little bit better here after the Rams had gone on a 7-0 run to cut it to six. Venegas has it for the Rams. Gets a pick, now he's to the right side to the basket and his shot was blocked. Ortiz comes out of there with it and slams it off of one of the Elkins Knights. Good hustle by Ortiz for the Rams to be able to save the possession. He has no points in the game, Ortiz, but a lot of good hustle plays in the action tonight. 119 to play third quarter. The Knights have a 10-point lead. Van Agus trying to get it in for the Rams. Gets it into Ortiz. And he looking for the handoff. Now he passes it off and it's stolen. And it's tipped away. The ball's at half court. And finally the Elkins comes out of it. Out of there with it. And Chris Johnson has it. Looked like he was fouled. No call. Panule for three. No good. Rebound. Comes down to the Knights. That's Bell. Shane Bell goes high for the rebound. Chris Johnson has it again. Thinking about a three. Crossover dribble into the lane. Off the rim, no good. And a rebound attempt by Easy. And he was fouled by Ryan Jones of the Knights. Ezekiel Easy had the rebound in one of the Knights. Ryan Jones came in there and almost looked like a cornerback tackling a receiver. Still a 10-point game, 49 seconds to play in the third quarter. Ortiz checks out for the Rams, and in comes Caleb Davis. 
the big guy. 6'6 sophomore. He only has two points on the night, though, and they could use some points from him, I'm sure. The Knights playing great defense in a game so far. Hope, hope they can keep that going the rest of the way. Van Agus. Davis for the Rams at the free throw line. Easy. Swing it to the right side now. That is Lamette. Lamette takes it to the elbow and then brings it back out. Van Agus to the basket and he's challenged and fouled. The foul looks like it's going to be on Van Ewell and he was very frustrated with the call. Got him on the arm evidently and now the free throw attempts will come from Joshua Van Agus. I believe it's Van Agus. Yes, he has uh, gone to the line four times. He's two for four. Made his first two and then he missed his second two. And let's find out what he does on his third two free throws. He makes this one. 41 to 32. Rams trail by nine to the Knights. I was mentioning earlier they got off, the Knights did, got off to a bit of a slow start in the ball game. But uh, since that 15-10 first quarter, they have really done a good job. Van Agus, his second free throw no good. He's 50% uh, from the free throw line here today. Three for six, and the ball was tipped out of bounds off the Knights. So the Rams will get the next possession, an extra possession. Diaz checks back in the ball game for the Rams. Josh, Josh Carr Diaz. Van Agus will inbound a ball for the, for the Rams. 18 seconds to play, third quarter. Van Agus looking, and he hits Washington. Steps for a three. Front rim, no, no good. And Diaz, though, gets the rebound with 13 seconds to play in a quarter. Van Agus, 10 remaining in the quarter. Getting a pick. He doesn't really take it. Now he's penetrating. And the ball's stolen. Two, one. Can he get it off? He got it off at the buzzer. Chris Johnson with a slam dunk. What a play to end the quarter. And the Knights take a commanding 11-point lead in the fourth quarter. Take a break. 43-32 Knights. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with x one VibeFortBend.com coverage of Super Saturday playoff basketball is brought to you all day and into the night by Xfinity with the X1 Sports app. Get up to the minute scores, stats, and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. Here to take you the rest of the way is Patrick. Well, it's the fourth quarter. Here come the Knights. All the way to the basket is Spaniel with a beautiful pass from Shane Bell. Spaniel, it's his first bucket of the second half and now they take that 13 point lead again that's their largest of the ball game Diaz has it for the Rams they're trying to hang in there but the Knights are trying to slam the door here on this one Washington Van Agus to the basket tough shot with great defense for the Knights another breakaway for Johnson and this time he's fouled by Washington are they going to call a a, uh, per, a uh, intentional foul on that or not Coach uh, Thomas has got the signal for the intentional foul. And what are they going to call here? No. No intentional foul. It's going to be out of bounds, side out, or underneath the basket for the Elkins Knights. It definitely was an intentional foul, but I don't know if it was overly malicious. 
Chris Johnson will inbound the ball. Now a substitution coming in for the Rams. It's easy for Diaz. Here comes Chris Johnson with the inbound pass. Way outside. Down low to, to Jones for the layup on a nice pass from Glover. And it's now a 15-point lead. Largest lead of the game for the Knights with, his 11, with seven minutes to play. Washington for the Rams takes it in, but he's fouled up top. A little too close on the defense. So the Rams will take the ball out of bounds underneath, well, on the side here, the right side, right in front of their bench. Ezekiel Easy, we're going to inbound it. Now they, as Washington checks out for the Rams, and he goes all the way to the backcourt to Van Agus. 15-point lead for the Knights as they're trying to lock this one away. Van Agus, right side. That is Lamette, and he lost it. He's fighting for it now in the backcourt. He's got it. He's still being guarded by two of the Knights. It's tipped away again, and now there's going to be a foul. It's just really tough, hard-nosed defense from the Elkins Knights there as Lamette lost it, got it back, lost it again, got it back, and was just pressured all the way into the backcourt until there was a foul called on, it looked like it was called on Shane Bell. Lamette will go to the free throw line. He has no points in the game. He is, I don't believe he's taken a shot. He's going to go for a one and one from the line. It was 37 to 31 Knights a little while ago, and now it's 47 32. So a 10 1 surge by the Knights have given them the 15 point lead. Lamette with the free throw. He brackets it no good. There's uh, Ortiz with his good hustle again. and this time he loses it out of bounds. He had it, and then he got it tipped away from him. So Larison Lamette misses the free throw. Opportunity for the Rams to get some points on the board and goes awry. Van Yule inbounds it to Harris in the backcourt. 6.40 to play. Elkins Knights in command here. Up 15. Double team now on Harris. Van Yule has a good fake to the basket. Lays it up and in. What a move by Josh Fanuel. Fake the shot, crossover dribble all the way to the basket, scooped at home. Here's the pass out of bounds as Washington missed his target, Saunier. Fanuel now has uh, 16 points in the ball game. And he's going to help his teammates up the floor. He's at half court. Now Harris is going to take it himself. He's taking his time, and now he's looking for somebody. Off to Bell, swinging around. Chris Johnson for three. He's long on it. And the ball was tipped out of bounds off Washington of the Rams. Chris Johnson also has 16. Uh, Fanuel and Johnson lead the way for the Knights. 16 apiece. Harris, Fanuel, Bell swinging around to Johnson now. Johnson's last six points have come from slam dunk variety. Harris, right side. Baseline, 12 out, no good, but he's fouled on the shot. I believe it's going to be on Ortiz, and Harris will go to the free throw line. Jacoby Harris will go to the line for two. He is one for two from the line. He has one point in the game. Not doing a lot of shooting, but a lot of ball handling and directing traffic. Classic point guard activity. Here's his free throw. It's good. And a 16-point lead now for the Knights. Excuse me, 18 point lead. It is 50 to 32. With 5.53 to play in the ball game, Rams were tough in the first quarter and they were Valentier in the third quarter, cutting it to six. And then a couple of fast break slam dunks from Chris Johnson put it up to 10. And now all of a sudden the Rams have a 19 point lead, 51 32. As the Rams try to hang on by a thread here in this one. Washington being doubled. And now the ball's tipped and stolen. Here's Harris. Harris has it. Looks to the right. Got Bell. Lays it in for another layup for the Elkins Knights. 
And it's a commanding 21-point lead. The ball, the game slipping away from the Rams as the Knight, the Knights are taking total charge here. Pass in, inside is stolen away. Here's Bell to Fanuel. He lays another one in. And it's playground time for the Knights here. They're having some fun. 55-32 and a timeout by the Rams. We'll take a break. Knights 55, Rams 32. First Iron Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com you are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank the team at Office Depot in Sugarland for their assist. Office Depot Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, helping our team at VipeFortBend.com take care of business every day as we bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Back here at Hobson Fieldhouse where the Elkins Knights have a 23-point lead. Five minutes to play. Long shot for the Rams from Davis. No good. And a fight for the rebound. Sonier for the Rams has it. Van Agus off to the left side. Lamette misses it long on a three. And Bell with the rebound for Elkins. And they're taking their time bringing the ball up the floor. No need to be in a rush now. Van Yule. Little turnaround from 12. Left baseline. No good. Fields with the rebound and a lay-in. Jackson Fields has seven points now. Everybody getting in on the action. Dropping down to four minutes to play in a ball game. And the Rams... Season looks like it's coming to a close here. Lamet corner, Washington, three. That's the way it's going for him, in and out. Hoop wouldn't have it. Here's Harris, dish off, Glover, layup. Another layup for the Elkins Knights. They must have 20 layups in this ball game. Here's Van Agus taking it to the basket and misses his shot, but he's fouled. It's a... All of a sudden, the lead has ballooned to 27, 59 to 32. Since it was 37-31, my math says it's a 22 to 1 run for the Knights. Van Agus trying to break that ice, and he misses his free throw. Fan Fanuel checks out of the ball game, and that might be it for him. He has 18 points. In the ball game, he might be resting up the rest of the way. Van Agus, his next free throw is good. He's been 50% from the line today. Four for eight. And now here come the Knights with that large lead. Harris, nifty ball handling, splits a double, takes it into the lane. Off to Fields, who passes it to his next man, Glover, but there's a foul before the shot attempt from Glover 59 to 33 Elkins Knights have this one secure with 340 to play in a ball game Bell for the Knights and now Harris he's going to direct some traffic hand it off to Glover and he swings it to Bell thought about a three penetrates now Back out to Harris for three, short on a shot. And Ortiz comes up with it for the Rams, but his pass was stolen by Fields all the way to the baseline. Here's Bell taking it up, and he does not make the shot, but he's fouled. Tough attempt from Jacoby Harris. 
as he took it in strong, able to draw the foul and now go to the free throw line for two, where he is three for four in the ball game so far. That are, that's his three points of the night, all from the line. Here's his next free throw attempt, long, but it rolls in. It somehow went off the back rim and got in there nicely for him. You know things are going good, Patrick, when you see guys walking around smiling, yes. you know, with, with less than three and a half minutes right. to go. Yeah, there's a lot of smiling going on on the night side. Second free throw is no good. You can smile when you're up by 27 and three to play. Van Agus steps back for a three, around and out again. Another one of those looked like it was going in, but the Rams, kind of how it's going for him this evening. Nice pass from Johnson to Fields. He's double teamed now. He passes it off one of the defenders out of bounds, and the Knights will maintain possession. Well, all that remains to be thought about here is the final score, I believe. Now checking into the ball game will be Diaz for the Rams as Ortiz will step out. Ortiz kind of holding his uh, hamstring there as he comes out of the ball game. Nice pass to Fields at the block. Lays it up. No good. A little strong on the layup attempt and the ball's tipped out of bounds off the Knights. The score says 60-33 to 33 as if it's been a blowout all the way and it really hasn't been. It was a six-point game down to the last couple about the last minute of the third quarter and then the Elkins Knights just went on a raging surge here shot blocked now the Rams come out of it come out of there with it Van Agus has it shot looked like it was tipped and then Glover comes out of the rebound for the Knights Bell now Harris as we approach the two minute mark in the ball game Harris taking his time no hurry at all with the 27 point lead his pass is almost stolen, but Bell comes out of there with it. Glover has it, reverses it, lays it up and in with a nice, pretty reverse shot from Glover, Coy Glover. Washington for the left side. He's short on his three, and now here comes a big fast break. And Chris Johnson, a reverse slam dunk this time. His last eight points have come from slam dunk variety. 64-33. Rams trying to get something. Diaz airballs a three, and now the benches are being cleared here. See if these fellas can get in the ball game for some action. Harris is fouled intentionally, I think, by Davis to get that whistle, get these ball players into the ball game. Anazine comes on into the ball game for the Rams, along with Grasso, Lamette. And Sonye. Let me see if I can get the Knights ball players in there. We got uh, McKinsey's in there for the Knights. Uh, we got number 10, Paul, in there. Lucian Paul. And now coming into the ball game is Hardeman. Jaren Jaren Hardeman. So everybody's getting some action today, and this is the way you like it if you're the Elkins. Knights get everybody in and win a nice game and get to the next round. Harris will shoot free throws. He's no good on his free throw attempt. Rebound comes down to Fields. Little baby hook, no good. Tip up, no good. And it's still fight for it. And Sonier now has it for the Rams. Sonier taking his time a minute 20 to play the ball game and a 31 point Elkins lead. Stops his dribble, thought about a shot, passes it off to the left side. Three-pointer from Anazine, and the ball is lost out of bounds. And here comes another Elkins Knights player. Harris comes out, and it is Barnett into the ball game. Christopher Barnett. So he's going to see some action. Did they put in Talamaki yet? I have not seen him in the ball game yet. <laughs> Here come the Rams. Shot attempt from the right side. Their last three or four three-pointers have not gone in. Caleb da Davis misses that one. And what do we have? A whistle. And an inadvertent whistle, evidently. A minute to play in a ball game, 64 to 33. 
And now Fields comes out of the ball game, and here comes, well, Sean Parrish in the ball game. Sonye, who's had a pretty good ball game, and then he came out, was a little bit injured, and he kind of lost his momentum a little bit. Here's Lamette with a nice little floating 10-footer, and Rams finally score after a long drought. Passes lost out of bounds, or lost by McKinsey. Rams have it. Crossover dribble by Onazine. And it's taken away. Here comes Paul to the basket. He lays it in. <laughs> Much to the happiness of the crowd as he got a great steal and a nice finishing layup. Sonye air balls a three from the right side. 18 seconds to play. Steal by Sonye. He's going to get one more bucket here tonight on a layup. And 10 seconds to play. Will they get one more bucket? Paul has it. He's fouled. No call. Rams come out of there with it. Ball's in the air. Shoot come it down now. with it is uh, McKenzie. Tries a three-pointer from about 45 feet out. No good. But the Elkins Knights come up with the big win. 66-37 to 37 in round one over the Maid Creek Rams, who played a valiant game. But too much of the Knights here as they got a... A huge run late in the third and into the fourth quarter. Roger, you have something to say. Well, I'm just thinking that the cream is rising to the top. Uh, you know, year after year, it's always a very good bunch of matchups between the KD ISD 6A teams and the Fort Bend ISD 6A teams. Um, I don't think that I've ever seen a clean sweep either way. I think we have now, haven't we? But we We've have that now, don't we? Is it one more Travis yet? beat Seven Lakes, Ridgepoint beat Tompkins, Bush, Bush beat Taylor, and now oh, Elkins well. has taken care of Maid Creek. And they've all been fairly convincing uh, wins for all of the, the district teams. That's good, great news. Let's take a little break here, and we'll come back and maybe wrap up, get a couple of leading scorers from each team, and we'll, we'll tell you as much as we know from the playoff action that has gone on today, and a lot of it has gone on today. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready, and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate, and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. VibeFortBend.com, live basketball coverage on Super Saturday Girls and Boys Playoffs is brought to you so far and brought to you in our upcoming fifth game by Xfinity. With the X1 Sports app, get up-to-the-minute scores, stats, and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the winter First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. And all four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. Well, 
Patrick pretty one-sided in the second half. 66-37, Elkins beats Maid Creek. Bring us inside the numbers. Well, inside the numbers, first of all, let's just go through some, some point totals for the Rams. The, the uh, losing team today uh, ending their season with a 13-9 and overall record. Uh, Van Agas ended up with 10. Caleb Davis, 2. Um, Jamon Washington with 6. And Ezekiel Easy with 2. And the leading scorer was Angel Sonnier, the uh, six foot sophomore who was very impressive tonight. He was a good looking ball player. He'll be around for a couple of more years, fortunately, for the uh, for the Rams. For the Elkins Knights who win and go on to the next round, your scoring leaders are well, basically the scorers Bell with four, Harris with four. Paul ended up with two in the fourth quarter layup, Glover four, uh, Jones nine, great second half. Field with seven. The leading scorers for the Elkins. Nights today were uh, Josh Fanuel with 18, a solid game, and then Chris Johnson also with 18, another solid game. But the big scoring, uh, the big numbers, as Roger said, was it was 37 to 31, six-point game with Rams holding tight, and then the Elkins Knights went on a 29 to six run to close the game out and blow it open to the big lead and the big win. So Knights move on, and Roger, you've got some more to tell us about the scores of other games well we want to make our list absolutely complete when we have the girls game between Fulcher and Manville which is coming up at about seven o'clock but thankfully we have a little bit of time here for once we have a little <laughs> bit of time to just catch our breath yeah between games it's been a crazy crazy day but a great day all right so first of all we'll go back to the first game that we broadcasted today the Hightower boys absolutely crushing Houston Waltrip 100 to 43 and I've been trying to track down who has won or if the game has even been played between Crosby and Texas City uh, my sources are just kind of I don't know and that's who uh, they'll play the winner of that game right Roger? yeah so Hightower will get either Crosby or Texas City well Foster won another team out of District 24 5a finished second in the district behind Hightower and they beat Sharpstown here today 55 to 44 and now foster will play beaumont united which is a pretty salty team and they beat laporte in round one 92 to 54 that was this afternoon we do have some disappointing news just heartbreaking news for the marshall buffs who went to overtime against Northside, and Northside beat them 73 to 71 in the extra period so that that really hurts and i also have some information that says that Goose Creek Memorial and Nederland are going to play each other Monday. So the winner of Goose Creek Memorial or Nederland will now play Northside. And I guess since our Marshall Buffs are out of that part of the bracket, then, well, we don't really care anymore, <laughs> do we? But we do have great news for the rest of Fort Bend ISD and the boys' ranks. Bush with an 83-71 to win over Katie Taylor. That's a four seed beating a one seed. And so Bush now takes on either Houston Heights or Cy Fair. They're playing tonight at 7. Ridgepoint beat Tompkins 71-58. to And if I'm not mistaken, that's a 3 seed beating a 2 seed. So the, they will get the winner of Bel Air and Stratford. And Bel Air and Stratford's boys teams were warming up to play in, in Del Mar Fieldhouse when I left that spot where the Dulles girls won. More on that in a moment. And you've got Travis, the Tigers, boys beat Seven Lakes commandingly 76 to 46. And they will play either Lamar or Cy Creek. Those two teams play tonight at 7 o'clock. So now let's go over to the girls' side. Dulles wins 75 to 68 over a great Jersey Village team, a team that had lost only two games all year. And those two games were to the undefeated number one ranked Cy Creek Cougars. So. Jersey Village really wanted another shot at Cy Creek, but the Dulles Lady Vikings had other ideas, and they took them out today. They really played a great fourth quarter. They just, they just showed who were, was the stronger team in the fourth quarter. And now Dulles will play either the Topkins Falcons girls or Spring Branch Memorial, and we'll try to get something on that when we bring you the last game between Fulcher and Manville's girls. Uh, Tompkins and Memorial started at 5.30, so I'm sure we can find that. Uh, Ridgepoint played a great game against a strong Heights team, 61-58. to They take the loss, and there was this girl that plays for 
heights. I don't think I've ever seen a high school girl shoot three-pointers like she did. I mean, she's just bombing them in, and it seemed like she shot about 75% wow. from beyond the arc. So that was really the difference when you have a three-point game. So uh, Grace Alvarez is definitely, she the woman on that team. <laughs> and uh, the good news for Heights is that they advanced to round three. The bad news is they will probably play against Cy Creek. Yeah. And uh, that might be the end of the line. A tough task for him, right? A very, very tough task. Okay, so now finally, before we say goodbye on this particular game broadcast, Fulcher and Manville are about to play, and the winner of that one will face either Lamar Consolidated or Beaumont United. We're going to track down the score for that one. Foster was a winner over Barbers Hill today. We don't have the score on it. But the winner of Foster and Barbers Hill will play either Angleton or Friendswood. In fact, that game may already be decided, but with everything that's been going on this week and so many people out of pocket, including a lot of part-timers who report on sports and stuff like that, it's just been hard to find the information. And we just don't have it, but we'll get it. We will work on that. So, great job, Patrick. Thank you for calling this half game. Yes, it was fun. It's <laughs> I meant for it to be a full game for you. <laughs> It's good to be here, and uh, Elkins Knights are in round two, and uh, they got a chance to keep continue to move on, I think. Yes, I, I have to say, you know, it was good to be here. I totally agree. I mean, it does the heart and the mind and the body good to be in a warm place where there are other people <laughs> enjoying the healthy competition. Yeah. I mean, this is just great. You know, it's, after, it was tough to be in our homes yeah, after this last uh, week. with different problems. Yeah, it was, it was a strange week. But here we are. We're back into real life again, hopefully. Yes, what a long, strange trip it's been. Let's never have another week like that, <laughs> no, Mr. I, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it like that either. So, All right, so again, our final score on the game we just wrapped up. It is the Elkins Knights beating the Maid Creek Boys 66-37. to The winner will play either Spring Branch Memorial or Westbury. We will turn this thing off for right now, recharge the batteries, and we will be back with our final game of the day, the Fulcher girls taking on the Manville girls. This is VipeFortBend.com. <laughs>